Hello there, Martin here from Schildfacher Potsdam and welcome to my birthday bouts. So we have a very young tradition, but a tradition nonetheless to fight for your birthday a certain number of bouts for a certain amount of time and that amount is of course not arbitrary. So in these bouts I get to fight all my students and my fencing partners with several weapon combinations and while I'll usually try to match the weapons of my opponents that's not always feasible because in just the 3.3 seconds of pause I'm not able to switch like my safety gear and since I wanted to be properly protected from longsword blows I went with my sparring gloves so it's not really I'm not really able to get into a rapier or anything like this. I still try to go with uh, side swords, but my grip's not, well, it's not optimal. Let's say it just like this. It's more like a thumb grip to, to get my, my fist right in there. But as a result of this uh, training session, we get to see a lot of interesting weapon combinations. And of course, uh, since I'm already also fighting my students, which not all of them have full gear and some of my training partners didn't uh, have full gear as well, I have to control my intensity to make sure that everybody is safe. Especially wielding a long sword like here against very light gloves, I really have to make sure that I don't hit the lightly armored gloves too hard. But for example against Melissa here I can go a little more. But um, in these kind of challenges you really have to watch your personal stamina. So every bout that I get into a wrestling action that's just really exhausting in the long run. So I really have to make every movement count and you will see me trying to fear out my opponents most of the time. And since it's continuous sparring just getting a hit doesn't necessarily stop them from running you down. So that's something to still keep in mind, which is, I think, martially very valid, that if your hit wouldn't kill, you would still need to be in a position where you could properly defend yourself and protect you from any damage, right? So, like, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. That's really a solid approach. And also, like I said, uh, watching our stamina, playing the endurance game is really important because not only air gets a really rare resource in these bouts, but uh, heat is another factor. Thus, wearing full gear is actually a disadvantage here, right? Um, while my opponents enjoy the benefit of having like long pauses, wearing light gear and making it so basically that I cannot like hit really committedly to any part of the body, they are of course able to do that on me. And that is really great training. And I probably will talk of it uh, a bit more in a future video, but putting some constraints on your fencing, which actually narrows down the actions you can perform and the things that you are able to do safely, that can really improve your overall fencing session because after all you will focus on these parts quite a bit more you get more repetitions uh, it's harder to employ them because you are so much more predictable so you have to uh, find other ways of fainting and getting into the uh, mind of your opponent to make these things work so this is a really great challenge which is really useful I think especially if you fight with uh, newer opponents or your students for example. In addition it's just nice to fend so many different people one after another and always having to adjust one own style of fencing towards the opponents. Okay, so let's get a bit more into the technical side of things since now it's uh, one sword against two swords, which I would think is quite the disadvantage. 
and I to try to make up for it by basically attacking the forward hand of my opponents and like finding the gaps between the swords because I think Stefan didn't do dual swords for quite a while so there are certain gaps which I can abuse with, uh, with a good footwork and getting a couple of thrusts in there but don't uh, get fooled it's still really really hard and you will see me switching my lead hand quite a bit and that is just a great thing to do in general in your fencing because remember training time is almost always better than just not training actually if you want to get better in that activity so if you can extend this training time by switching hands by resting your main hand while uh, working on your left hand then that's probably a good thing and fighting with the left hand or your off hand is just another restraint right it's just something that puts more pressure on you and your skills and will toughen up not only your body but also your mind and you will learn quite a few things not only how to fence with your left sword uh, with your left hand actually but also how to fight against left-handed fencers okay so let's talk tactics like I said getting into a wrestling action is really tiresome so what I actually want to do is keep my opponents at a distance right the less I have to actually move the more I can save my stamina for later rounds so I go with a lot of probing attacks and try to keep my distance to basically stick to the basics getting a thrust in here or there with some footwork is a nice a nice thing but mainly you saw me just uh, denying that wrestling action because well I, I don't want to deal with it right now in that sense fighting against the spada duimani which is quite a bit longer than my longsword feather is actually quite relaxing because Stefan wants to use his range so I can keep playing at that distance going for the hands using some Tempi that he gives me with sweeping motions to attack him in return, right? So this is actually quite a relaxing round. Fencing against your own students, especially if they are new and don't know you that well, is always like a huge advantage because the respect they have for you in general gives you like a real edge so I don't need to do a lot of actual blade movements but uh, Lucas on this side um, has just so much respect of all of my actions that I can easily dominate the distance I want to fight at basically and that goes for my next opponent as well right so it's like the optimal case that the Anonimo Bolognese talks about where he or she advises you to strike with such fury and basically act like the devil himself to strike fear into the hearts of your opponents so you have the psychological control of that engagement. Auf jeden Fall schon über Halbzeit. Yeah, well, Stefan lied. It's not actually half uh, time for me at this point, uh, since it's only round 16 of 33. But I'm starting really to feel it. So my actions get a bit sloppier and I have really to take care psychologically that I just don't go swinging wildly, right? So I want really to leave my partners as safe as possible in that engagement because of course I want to fence him again next year. Fencing sword against sword and buckler is another great challenge. If you've done it you will know that having a buckler is just such a huge advantage to defend some lines of attack 
and I actually found it to be a bit easier for me to get into his uncovered side when I'm fencing left-handed which is of course not by chance since if I'm fencing left-handed my sword points towards his uncovered weapon side as well. The next point I want to emphasize is something that is written in Giovanni della Gocchi but also in many other fencing masters and that is to be a great fencer and to learn the art of fencing well you have to fight many different opponents of different stature, different heights and so I'm really glad that we have fencers in our club that are really tall and some that are uh, smaller than me so I can actually experiment with the tactics that the historical masters gave us at their time. For example, to strike to the arms of larger opponents. This bout here with Stefan just uh, is a great teacher that first intention strikes to the legs are indeed whiskey, right? So while I have superior reach with my long sword compared to his side sword, Striking the legs is still a dangerous action and he does a great job of punishing it uh, in this case. Next round is against Melissa once again who just came back from a beginners women's tournament taking second place and I still want to congratulate her on this occasion. But I wanted to show her something and that is the superiority of footwork. So really make great use of the movements that your feet actually do take. Get in the training, do the work and then you will hopefully get great at it sometimes if you're not too exhausted of course. By now you will have noticed that the 3.3 seconds pause are actually just 3 seconds because our timer couldn't handle the decimals so I'm actually cheated, but I already look forward to uh, getting 35 when we'll round up the pause time to 4 seconds, so that will be an easy peasy year for me. Well, here I get quite thoroughly crushed by Marcel, and just after that last bout where my footwork was really on point, it's all falling apart right now. So. I try to get back to the historical sources, right? If you if you ever feel lost, go back to the historical sources. And what do they say? Well, don't be the first attacking in the case of Giovanni della Rocchia, but wait for the tempi and employ several counters. Provoke actions, just not wait passively in range for any action that might come, but um, direct the fight in the way that you would like. Also, speaking of Vijani, if your opponent is smaller, then attacking with an Imbrocata is usually a good plan because you can make great use of that coming down motion of that thrust. It's really hard to block and as you have usually a bit more range as the larger fighter, you can um, make a really great use of it that way. And the next is don't give up. You will always have up and downs and it's always easier to live in these up moments, right? But the downs are actually the moments where you will learn one thing or two. So fighting your way out uh, of a down phase and just keep going even if you fail, that's fine, right? A master has failed more times than his students mm -hmm. ever tried, mm -hmm. is a saying I really like. Mm -hmm. So keep fighting, not only mm -hmm. in fencing, but life in general. Mm -hmm.
So, 
Do you feel old now? Fuck this. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember you can support us via likes, shares and subscribes and also on Patreon. Any amount is always highly appreciated. Until next time, take care and ciao. <laughs>